Hi, and welcome back. Today we're going to have a look at uh, hanging a soft drop, and uh, Phil's coming in right now with a drop that's just arrived in the studio this morning. You can see it's a pretty small box. Soft drop arrives differently to the uh, trans lights and vinyl because they're relatively hard plastic, had to come in very large tubes, uh, which are getting increasingly difficult to ship. Uh, soft drop, on the other hand, because it's soft goods, folds up, goes in a box because the stuff folds down. Uh, it, can, it can transport very much more easily than the traditional backdrops. We've had at least two instances where people have called us up saying, where's the backdrop? Uh, we tell them it's been delivered. They say, it's not here, I'm on stage, I can't see it. You have to say, well, is there a box on stage somewhere? Oh, there's a box in the corner. Oh. So let's open up the box and take a look at it. There's actually two drops in here and they're six meters by three meters. Which of course, if it was a vinyl backdrop would have been in a three meter tube. So this is very small packaging. So everyone comes with an instruction. This is the hanging instructions. The ends are color coded so you can tell which is right, which is left. And there's also an indicator for the midpoint. If we open up the box, you can see here that we have several ties, and this is where this piece of paper comes in useful because we have a red tie that's tied in the left-hand corner, and a green tie in the right-hand corner, and a white tie which is for the middle of the top edge of the backdrop. So this helps you when you come to hanging it. And then it's just like hanging a curtain. You just start at one end, two people can just lift it into the air and hang it one grommet at a time and it's a very easy process um, compared with the vinyl drops, which involved getting uh, the tube into the air, unfurling it as it went. It tended to be a eight to 10 person operation. Now two people can literally hang the same soft drop. Okay, so let's come on over and install it in this frame. Uh, Jonas, if you're gonna get up on the lift, now would be a good time. We're gonna keep it in the box to keep it clean. Studio floors, not the most hygienic of places, and the last thing you want is dirt from the floor going up, showing up on the front of the backdrop. As we mentioned before, the uh, ties are color coded. What you're gonna do is basically take this up and tie the green one right in the corner, uh, probably around the corner, just to make sure that it doesn't slide as you're going across. Of course, if, if it was a much bigger drop, we'd be applying this in a different way, either to a, a pipe hanging from the, the permanence uh, or a truss that might be lifted up on motors um, or even onto a curtain track so we can slide the thing around. The soft drop comes with um, some options for hanging. Uh, the standard operation is to have grommets or eyelets around the edge spaced one foot 30 centimeters apart. Um, however, we can also set it up for pipes. So we can give you a pipe pocket, a chain pocket, um, Velcro, uh, the, a variety of options. Okay, so we've got it generally into position now. What we're gonna do is come over here. In the bottom, there's a pipe pocket and we're gonna insert this pipe into it to give it a bit of weight to tension it up in the vertical plane. So what we're seeing here is um, we're getting a little sag on the frame. Um, so I think what we're going to do is adjust the ties to compensate for the sag. If you see these, these um, kind of what we call wine glass shaped wrinkles appearing, that's indicative that the middle's sagging a little. So let's compensate for that early on. Of course, if you're using truss, you don't have this problem because you don't get the sag. It's just um, because of this, the frame setup that we've, that we've got going here. Hey guys, uh, this is looking pretty good. Um, can you come here? Uh, let's take a look. How about the uh, wrinkles here? Can we can we get them out? 
Yeah, the, the wrinkles will over time drop out. We're in a bit of a hurry today, so we're gonna help those along, but it's a good question. I've got a good solution for it. The way to approach the wrinkles um, is either by the gentle application of steam or by adding a light dampness to the surface. You don't want to get it wet. If you get it wet, the flame retardant salt that's in there will leach out and you will end up with sweat rings on your backdrop, which you don't want, obviously. So it's a very, very gentle spritz. Just almost, it's almost like you're wetting the air in front of the drop rather than wetting the drop itself. So let's start in one corner, just in case this goes horribly wrong. So just a little bit of water. The effect is not gonna be obvious instantly because it just takes time for the, the, the effect to relax it, but um, give it another few minutes and this will start having an effect. Um, if we only had, if we could leave it overnight, we probably wouldn't have to do this, particularly if you're leaving it overnight in a, a fairly humid atmosphere like we have today with the rain outside. But um, in the interest of getting it done quickly, this is what we're doing. One other thing to think about though is that if you're doing nice even lighting from multiple directions, chances are the lighting will actually take most of these out anyway. So this is just a sort of safety measure that we're doing just to make it perfect because we're shooting a video. Yeah, feels pretty good. Um, so that'll like I said, take a, a few minutes to take effect, but uh, what we should do is get this into position for the shoot. Okay guys, so if we can bring the um, soft drop in to line up kind of central on the truss. Okay, so this is good positioning. We've got plenty of room to hang lights on the truss to light the front. Uh, looking behind, okay, this is good. Um, just note that if this were a normal trans light or a vinyl day-night backing, this would not be enough room. I mean, this is about two meters. Typically, they need three meters or more. But for soft drop, this is absolutely perfect because we're going to be lighting in this first meter or so. Absolutely perfect. Let's check the position of the uh, scenery out front. So mm, optimum distance is usually about five meters. Minimum safe distance is typically about four. So let's see what we've got here. We've got one, two, three, four meters. That's, that's pretty much right. So let's slide this uh, window into position and we'll take a quick look at it from camera position in front of the window. Okay, so we're gonna look at it from approximate camera height, but again, about a meter 45. Uh, because we have a fairly small drop, there's only limited angles we can get to before we start shooting off. It's surprising how much you see out of a window as soon as you start getting close to it. So even if we had a drop twice this size, we wouldn't cover all angles, but this is good. This, this looks good. Scale feels right, feels realistic. It feels like it did when we were out at the location. Come in, have a take a look. Don't get too self-confident yet though. We've got one more person we have to ask and that's the art director. So uh, Sarah, Yeah. what do you think? That looks pretty good to me. I think that's gonna work. Normally what we would do, we would have actually discussed the eyeline in advance with the art director who would have given that to us. And we would send them an image like this for them to check in their 3D model before we go to print. Okay, so um, everything's done now for this part of uh, the masterclass, but now we have to move on to lighting the drop. So let's start with that one in the next episode.